Welcome to another episode of All Things Mysterious, the podcast where the realms of true crime, the supernatural, and the unexplained converge. I'm your host, Matt. I'm Jordan. Let's dive right in. Women's are girls' best friend. They're not actually, it's food. That's true. For the record. <laughs> But this diamond, you probably don't want to be friends with. Would you believe that there is a certain object that is so cursed, it has killed countless people and inflicted unspoken horrors on people? Yes, because I am cursed and I relate to that. That is accurate. (laughs) But today we're going to talk about the Hope Diamond and the curse that comes along with it. All right, I'm down. And you might, when I'm going through this, you might... To start seeing some similarities in yourself. I did not write this story just to talk about all the ways that you're cursed or anything like that. It's just electronics. Mostly. That's enough. Trust me. All the poor electronics that you broke. Our mics are still going very strong. I'm telling you, we need to get sponsored by Rode because their microphones are indestructible. I'm touching it right now. It's still working. Oh, it just died. Just kidding. I'm telling you, these things are worth their weight in gold. Rode, if you're listening, sponsor us. For reals. For reals. The Hope Diamond is one of the most famous and storied gemstones in the world. Renowned for its rare deep blue color and extraordinary size, this remarkable diamond has a long and intriguing history that spans centuries. Captivating all who have gazed upon its beauty, join us as we delve into the fascinating tale of the Hope Diamond and explore the mysteries and legends that surround this gem. Throughout the centuries, a haunting legend has shrouded the Hope Diamond in an aura of mystery and fear. Whispers of a curse have followed this stunning gemstone believed to bring misfortune and tragedy to all who possess it. Tales of untimely deaths, financial ruin, and heartbreak have become intertwined with the lore of the Hope Diamond, captivating the imagination of those who dare to delve into its dark past. The journey of the Hope Diamond began deep within the mines of India, where it was believed to have been originally discovered centuries ago. This extraordinary gemstone with its mesmerizing blue hue quickly caught the eye of moguls and monarch alike, lead into a series of exchanges and acquisitions that would acquire its fate. At the start, this thing was a massive 112 carats. As the Hope Diamond passed through various hands over the years, it underwent a transformation like none other. From being cut and recut to enhance its brilliance to crossing continents and cultures, the diamond story is the tapestry and intrigue. Each new owner brought their own mark upon the gem, adding to its lore and infamy. Known owners starting from 1653. John Best Tavener owned it until 1668 when Louis XIV of France acquired it. It stayed in the French monarchy until 1793 when Louis XVI of France and Marie Antoinette were beheaded. From 1793 to 1805, we don't know who owned it, but in 1805, King George IV of the UK got a hold of it until 1812 when Daniel Ellison got it. In 1830, Thomas Hope acquired it. 1839, Henry Philip Hope acquired it. 1861, Henry Pelham Clinton, the sixth Duke of Newcastle, got it. 1884, Lord Francis Hope. 1894, his wife May Yohe got it. 1901, Adolph Will, a London jewel merchant, who sold it to Simon Frankel the same year. Selim Habib bought it in 1908 for the Sultan Abdul Hamad II of Turkey, allegedly. 1909, Simon Saw got it. 1910, Pierre Cartier. 1911, Edward Beale McLean and Evelyn Walsh McLean. And we'll talk about them here in a few minutes. Remember them. Harry Winston got it in 1947 until 1958 when he donated it to the Smithsonian Institute. Okay, so I'm gathering that most of these people had it for like a super short amount of time. Yeah, a lot of them had it and then misfortune arose. A lot of them died early and a lot of them basically went to bankruptcy and had to sell it. 
Okay, so at this point, was the curse like well known yet? Or I'm sure we'll probably get into that. It wasn't super well known. And a lot of this kind of backs into John Tavener, the first owner. A lot of it came from him because when he was trying to sell the diamond, he allegedly added a backstory. But then when you keep going further down the line, the monarchs of France had it for a long time. Louis the Fourteenth was the only one that was in power for a long time. They did have it for a while. Yeah, Louis XV ended up dying pretty early. And then, of course, Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette was They didn't murdered. have good luck. Yeah. Then it went to other monarchs and then individual people. A lot of these people ended up dying early, having financial ruin. We'll get into some of the specifics, especially Edward and Evelyn. That makes sense. I just thought, like, I was listening especially closer to the end there when, like, almost everyone, it was, it seemed to be going so quickly between hands. Yeah, it seemed like after the French monarch got rid of it, it exchanged pretty rapidly. Usually only staying a few years to sometimes 15 years at maximum, but towards the end there, it definitely started going really fast, like in the 1900s. Exactly. It was like, oh, well, I'm done with this thing. Here you go. Yeah, I think Edward and Evelyn probably kept it the longest 36 years. Oh, yeah, that's a long time to have it. I mean, if you count the Smithsonian, they've had it since 1958. Yeah, they don't count. They're an institution. (laughs) We'll get into it here in a minute about some of the bad stuff that happened. Basically, you didn't really want to own this thing, apparently. Apparently so. (laughs) As the Hope Diamond exchanged hands throughout history, a diverse array of owners contributed to its mystique and the legends surrounded its reputed mystical powers. From royalty and socialites to collectors and adventurers, each owner added a layer of intrigue to the diamond story. Some believe that the Hope Diamond possessed mystical powers, bestowing blessings upon some and curses upon others. Tales of supernatural occurrences and unexplained phenomena followed in the wake of the diamond, fueling the myth of its unique properties. The first reported incidents of the curse of the Hope Diamond are steeped in tragedy and misfortune, casting a shadow over those who dared to possess this fabled gem. Stories of sudden deaths, financial ruin, and personal hardships have haunted several of the diamond's early owners, leading many to believe in the ominous power of the bewitchful. One of the most well-known accounts involves the French merchant John Baptiste Tavener, who acquired the diamond in the 17th century. Soon after possessing the gem, Tavener faced a series of calamities, including financial troubles and personal loss, leading some to attribute his misfortunes to the curse of the diamond. It is also rumored that Travenier died by wolf attack early. Subsequent owners included members of European loyalty and American magnates also experienced a string of unfortunate events that seemed to coincide with their ownership of the Hope Diamond. From tragic accidents to mysterious deaths, the curse of the diamond appeared to spare no one who came into contact with it. The tales of mysterious death, financial ruin, and tragic events associated with the Hope Diamond are both chilling and comparing, adding to the legend of the curse. One such story revolves around Evelyn Walsh McLean, an American socialite who acquired the diamond in the early 20th century. Despite her initial fascination with the gem, McLean's life took a dark turn following her possession of the diamond. Her husband ended up going mad and being sentenced to live in an insane asylum. She lost her son in a car accident. Her daughter died due to drug overdose and the eventual decline of the family's fortune, leading to her going bankrupt. Okay, so literally she had like every kind of misfortune. Yeah, she definitely had probably the worst luck out of all of them. I mean, she didn't die, so there's that. Some Uh, fates might be worse than that. Losing her son and daughter, losing all of her money, losing her husband. Yeah, I think that might be worse. Yeah, they probably had the worst. uh, Now, my question is, when she bought it at this point, do you know how much of the curse was really mentioned? From what I can tell, when it passed from person to person, the curse of the tale followed along with it. So she, when she bought it, she knew all the stories that went around it. Oh, so she's completely aware that most likely... She obviously didn't believe in any of it, but she thought it was fascinating that the backstory of this diamond helped her decide to buy it. Oh, I'm sure, because that makes it so much more exciting. But at the same time, I feel like after she bought it, she was like, oh... To be fair, I would totally buy an object that was supposedly cursed. Of course you would. I really would. Get uh, away from me. Far away. Even though we've been next to, I don't know how yeah. many cursed objects now, but mm. anyway. 
To be fair, I'm friends with you and your curse, so. That's entirely fair. Another haunting account involves King Louis the 16th and Marie Antoinette of France, who were said to have owned the diamond during the tumultuous years leading up to the French Revolution. Their ownership of the Hope Diamond was followed by their untimely deaths at the guillotine, fueling speculation about the curse's reach. They both died in their late 30s. Additionally, stories of other owners facing inexplicable deaths, financial setbacks, and personal misfortune have woven a tapestry of sorrow and despair around the diamond. From suicides to accidents and unexplained tragedies, the specter of the curse has lingered over those who have come into contact with the Hope Diamond. While the legends of the Hope Diamond curse largely revolve around historical figures and events, there have been modern cases that suggest the curse may still hold over those who have come into contact with the infamous gem. One notable example is the Smithsonian Institution, where the Hope Diamond is currently housed. Despite its status as a respected institution, some employees and visitors have reported experienced feelings of unease or discomfort in the presence of the diamond. While these accounts may be attributed to the diamond's dark past and not necessarily supernatural forces, they contribute to the ongoing fascination with the curse. Okay, I have a really weird question. Maybe it's not weird. I don't know. It's weird. Probably. You guys know me at this point. Do you think, instead of a curse, that it's haunted? Honestly, that's one thing that I thought of, especially after doing the Annabelle, because for me, the curse doesn't necessarily explain the discomfort or unease in the presence of it. That was exactly where my brain went, because mm -hmm. that's more of a haunting thing than a curse thing, in my opinion. That's kind of one thing that I thought about, too, is maybe it is a haunted object rather than a curse. I mean, they're not all that dissimilar, but at the same time, that would explain some things. Yeah. I don't know. But I just thought about that. It was like, maybe it's not cursed. Maybe it's haunted. Yeah, that definitely could be. Technically, curse and haunted aren't necessarily that far apart, really. No, they're really not. I mean, one of them's... I don't know how to explain that. I don't know. It could be either or, but ultimately, either way, I think one thing is clear that this diamond is probably not the best thing to own probably not but i was just thinking about that because especially like feelings of unease and discomfort around something i wouldn't think necessarily would be a cursed item thing unless maybe it's just a like gut instinct i guess i don't know so there is one story of the guy who actually delivered the diamond to the smithsonian i wouldn't want to be that poor guy <laughs> Afterwards, he apparently got hit by a car, broke a leg, and then weeks later, broke his other leg. That poor soul, all he did was <laughs> deliver the thing. He had the least amount of time out of everyone. What, a couple days, probably? Yeah. Another funny story is the guy who was supposed to send it from the previous owner to the Smithsonian because he just mailed it, and then a courier picked it up from the post office and delivered it. The courier is the one that got hurt. Oh, uh, the poor guy. At the time, in 1958, it was valued at a million dollars. The guy sent it through the mail with like $150 postage to keep it safe. No insurance, just sent this diamond through the mail. That dude has so much faith in the postal system. I, I don't mean, have that kind of faith. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't think I trust anyone, really. I guess, honestly, he probably didn't really care either way. Lord, no. Additionally, individuals who have studied, handled, or even photographed the Hope Diamond have occasionally encountered unexpected obstacles or setbacks in their personal or professional lives. While these incidents may be purely coincidental, they add to a contemporary twist to the enduring mystery of the diamond's curse. In examining the supposed curse of the Hope Diamond, it is essential to consider scientific explanations that may debunk myths or misconceptions surrounding its alleged powers. While the tales of misfortune and tragedy associated with the diamond are compelling, there are rational interpretations that can provide alternative perspectives on the supposed curse. One scientific explanation revolves around the psychological phenomenon known as confirmation bias, where individuals may attribute negative events to the curse simply due to their pre-existent belief in its existence. This cognitive bias can lead people to overlook alternative explanations for misfortune that befall individuals associated with the diamond. Moreover, the historical context which the curse narrative originated may have played a significant role in shaping perceptions of the Hope Diamond's malevolent influence. During periods of social and political upheaval, such as the French Revolution, attributing tragedies to the curse objects served as a convenient explanation for social turmoil. 
By critically examining the evidence and considering rational perspective, we can challenge the myths and misconceptions surrounding the curse of the Hope Diamond. While the lore of the mystery and superstition may persist, exploring scientific explanations can shed light on the true nature of this curse. Exploring scientific explanations can shed light on the true nature of this gem and the stories that surround it. Okay, so about confirmation bias. I think you're 100% right that it could be because confirmation bias can be about anything if you think about it. If you go into a doctor's appointment thinking that you're going to get the worst news ever, a lot of the time you're going to get bad news because you're just thinking bad news. But if you're thinking super negatively a lot of the time, any bad news that you get you're probably going to blame it on the cursed object, which is entirely fair. Yeah, I think a lot of the curse can be contributed to confirmation bias, but there is a lot of people who were very outspoken who owned the diamond, who originally bought it because nobody else wanted it, and they didn't believe in the curse at all, and they ended up dying or losing a family member. So a lot of it can be attributed to confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a very powerful bias, but I don't think it's 100% the answer. I think it explain some of it just not all of it that's exactly what i'm thinking obviously i don't think that it would be all of it think of that poor guy that broke like both of his legs like i'm sorry but i don't think that that's probably something that naturally would have happened I, I can understand like if you have bad luck and you attribute it to this like evelyn and her family that is a little more than just a little bad luck Right. That's not like stubbing your toe on a corner table or something. That's just normal everyday bad luck. This is excessive level. This is a little bit above the norm, (laughs) like just a little bit, a little bit above the norm. And you got to wonder if she's extremely unlucky or... I relate to you, my dear. I do. But that's the thing. Before she owned this diamond, there's really no evidence that she had any kind of misfortune or any kind of thing that could be considered bad luck. All this happened after they purchased the diamond. It's true. It's just more evidence towards the curse. Yeah. And that's why some of these people owned it later in life. And they mostly had a normal life until they owned the diamond. Which is fair. But at the same time, you also have to think about things that happen later in life naturally. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying everything is attributed to uh, the Hope Diamond. Uh, No, but that'll give you a lot of extra stuff that sure is going to look like it. It is interesting the things that have happened at the Smithsonian, though. Yeah, and the French Revolution would just so happen to coincide with when they owned the Hope Diamond. Just so happened. Darn it. And that also makes me realize that monarchies really need a better name and system. Louis XIV, Louis XV, Louis XVI, come on now. It was a thing back then, man. I'm not super smart when it comes to Roman numerals. Did you have to write it out? No, I had to look up the first one because I know the naming convention It just got to remember what X, V, and the I. Once you know that, it's not that hard, but it still takes me a minute. It was funny, though. It's frustrating. (laughs) I get it. I understand. To be fair, I did put the actual Roman numerals in my script. I'm so proud of you. I regretted it almost instantly, too. (laughs) Also, I wanted to congratulate you earlier. You said phenomena correctly. Did I? Yes. I don't remember, honestly. (laughs) I know. Since you weren't thinking about it, good job. Oh, I try not to think about anything and just go for it. I was just really proud of you. It's a good job. I've been doing pretty good today so far. Now that I said something, now it's going to be a shit show for the rest of the episode, but... You're welcome. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Confirmation bias. Exactly. AKA, Jordan's probably going to mess something up. The enduring allure of the Hope Diamond lies not only in its stunning beauty and storied past, but also in the captivating myths and legends that have woven around it over the centuries. Despite its reputation as a cursed gemstone, the diamond continues to fascinate and intrigue people around the world, drawing them into its mysterious orbit. In popular culture, the Hope Diamond has become a symbol of mystery, wealth, and intrigue, featuring prominently in literature, film, and art. Its reputation as a cursed jewel has inspired countless works of fiction, with authors and filmmakers weaving tales of romance, betrayal, and tragedy around its luminous blue depths. Additionally, the diamond's association with royalty, glamour, and sophistication has cemented its place in the collective imagination, making it a coveted symbol of status and elegance. From its display at the Smithsonian to its appearance in blockbuster movies and best-selling novels, the Hope Diamond continues to spark fascination and wonder among those who encounter it. Jordan, Mm -hmm. pop quiz. Great. What famous movie featured the Hope Diamond? 
Oh, I don't know. There are a lot of movies that feature diamonds. Wait, uh, it's a trick question. No, it's like a movie that I'm pretty sure you have. If I say the answer that I think I'm going to say, I'm going to feel stupid, so I don't want to say it. Say it. No, I feel like it's going to be wrong because the answer I feel like saying is Titanic. And I feel like that's wrong because I don't think that was even a diamond because it wasn't a diamond at all. What one? Titanic. I don't think that was a diamond, though. Was it the Titanic? Yeah. Fuck yes, I win. Yes, you're right, Jordan. It was the Titanic. It was called The Heart of the Ocean. And I really didn't even think that was a diamond, actually, but I win. But it was based on the real Hope Diamond. I really did have bad luck. Obviously, the Heart of the Ocean was shaped as a heart. The Hope Diamond is just a diamond shape. But it was based on the Hope Diamond. So I will give you credit for that. I was second guessing myself so hard. I felt like it was going to be some hardcore, I don't know, Leonardo. Well, it technically was a Leonardo DiCaprio movie, I guess. But I felt like it would be like that other Blood Diamonds movie or whatever. I don't even know if that was the right one. I just felt like it would be. This is what happens. I second guess myself every 10 seconds. I know. That's what makes these fun. I hate you so freaking much. Half the time I literally just do this to mess with you. I know you do. And I still play along. Yeah, Why? Do. I don't know. I just do. Makes it entertaining. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Glad you all love it so much. As of the present day, the Hope Diamond is housed in the National Gem Collection at the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C. The diamond remains a centerpiece of the museum's renowned collection, attracting visitors from around the world who come to marvel at its exquisite beauty and rich history. The Hope Diamond currently is 45.52 carats. Despite its illustrious past and the legends of its curse, the Hope Diamond continues to hold a significant place in the world of gemology and historical artifacts. Its unparalleled size, deep blue color, and flawless clarity make it a remarkable specimen of nature's craftsmanship while its story of intrigue and superstition adds to its mystique and allure. In the realm of popular culture, the diamond's presence in museum documentaries and educational programs serves to keep its legacy alive and introduce new generations to the spellbinding tale. While the curse of the diamond may persist in the public imagination, its current location and continued display ensures that its impact on history and culture remains palpable in the present day. The enduring mystery of the Hope Diamond curse lingers like a shadow over its illustrious history, leaving a trail of tragedy and misfortune in its wake. From ancient legends to modern day accounts, tales of inexplicable deaths, financial ruin, and personal hardship have surrounded this gem, fueling speculation about the existence of supernatural forces at play. Could there be more to the tales of woe and despair that have followed the diamond throughout the centuries? Is there a force beyond our understanding at work? weaving a malevolent spell around an extraordinary gemstone. Whether a believer in the paranormal or a skeptic of the supernatural, the legend of the Hope Diamond curse continues to captivate and intrigue, challenging us to explore the boundaries between fact and folklore, reality and myth. We are left to wonder, could there be more to the story than meets the eye? As we conclude our exploration of the curse of the Hope Diamond, we are left with a haunting question to ponder. Do objects possess the power to influence our lives, or are we simply captivated by the stories we tell about them? Let us know your thoughts. Is that a diamond that you'd want to own? Probably not, because, listen, I already have enough bad luck, and I already break damn near everything that I touch. So if I owned this diamond, listen, I feel like the world would probably blow up. Or you would own this diamond and you'd probably start having the best luck ever. Maybe that is how it worked. Maybe it would go backwards. Yeah, maybe your like bad luck would outweigh its bad luck and then it would just create good luck. It would cancel itself out so hard it goes into bad luck? <laughs> like may- maybe so. I don't know the answer to that. But no, I mean like everybody who owned this thing seemed to literally have like the worst crap happen. And listen, I don't need that in my life. My favorite color is blue. I would love to own a blue diamond. Not because I like diamonds or anything, but it does look pretty cool. Other than that, this thing is overpriced. I think I was like... I don't even want to know. I straight up don't even want to know. The last purchase price was a million dollars. And it's only gone up from there. That was back in the 1930s or 40s or whatever it was. I don't remember at this point. Absurdly high is what it is now. Honestly, probably with the history and everything, I'd say it's probably close to priceless. At least. And I value my life. 
And we're going to actually go see the Hope Diamond. We're going to test this out. I've been to the Smithsonian before. I don't know if I've been to that part of it, but I've been to the Smithsonian. Never been there. I always wanted to go there because I think I'd be fascinated. Can't remember which part of the Smithsonian I've been to. That's huge, complex. Exactly. I don't remember which part, but I know I've been to one or two buildings or something along those lines. And it was really, really cool. We're going to do an on-site episode one day. That place has to be so haunted. I'd like to do a paranormal investigation there because with all the objects that they have. As if they would allow us in there for very long by ourselves. Yeah, maybe we'll get lucky one day. Yeah, when we're super big and famous. Hint, hint, people. We got to be super big and famous. Thank you. Yes, help us investigate the Smithsonian. And other places also. Don't be a Chester. Thank you for joining us on this journey through all things mysterious. If you've enjoyed uncovering these mysteries with us, please show your support by liking, subscribing, and following us on your favorite listening platform. For more content and ways to stay connected, don't forget to check out our links in the description below. As always, we keep you guessing.